Hi everyone, this is Astro, and I am Planet Mitch, and we're both from Planet5D.com, and this is another episode of the Daily Planet 5D. In this particular episode, we are going to cover... Um, I usually like to hold something up, but I don't have anything to hold up, because what I'm going to do is show you something on the desktop today, and that is a, kind of a unique little... Maybe not so unique, but a, a combination of two different ways of managing folder structures that I've started doing in Final Cut Pro 10 with a sparse disk image. And I'm going to show you how that all came about and how I do it because I have a project that I just recorded outside and I need to make a new archive in order to put that in. Now, just so you know... Um, I tend to make fairly small projects, especially when I'm doing these Daily Planet 5D episodes that I edit in sometimes in ScreenFlow, which is how I'm going to do this one. But when I use a camera, I take the cards and I import the data to Final Cut Pro 10, and then I edit them there. And for a long time, I was getting so many projects just, just spread all over different disks and stuff and I record parts of something this day and then another part of something and then they ended up in the wrong events in Final Cut 10 and I was just it was a mess an absolute mess I probably had 40 different events and 20 different projects going on and so in talking to Chris Fenwick um, about the way he manages things he showed me a couple of things and I started using the sparse disk thing, and I'm making a really long introduction, but I wanted to know why I do it the way I do it, and that's that's sort of the reason I've put it together. Uh, the second part of that is the is if you use this if you don't use this procedure, let me go that way. With Final Cut 10, because you've got stuff in the events folder and you've got stuff in projects folders, and they you know the Final Cut event and Final Cut projects folders it's often very hard to take that data off and archive it somewhere as an entire entity. So this process using sparse disks allows me to not only edit, keep my Final Cut Pro kind of small so I don't have a whole bunch of events open at the same time, and be able to archive it when I'm done. Oh gosh, does that make any sense? I sure hope so. But let me walk you through this process. All right, first, uh, Chris Fenwick has this tutorial called the Project Folder Organization. Um, when he's dealing with projects, he likes to have all of these different folders. And you remember now, Chris tends to edit a lot of different projects. Um, and it seems to be fairly good for him to take this folder structure and to be able to hand all of this to somebody for a project, and then when they're done, they can archive that on a specific disk or whatever. So they know all of the pieces are there. Now this particular image is a little bit older because it doesn't have the new Final Cut 10 events and projects in it, but you kind of get the idea of the way he does it, and you can get a link to that. Uh, the link to this I'll call planet5d.com Chris folder so that's c-h-r-i-s-f-o-l-d-e-r -E so get to that shortcut there if you're listening to this via audio or wherever um, so that's plan5d.com slash chris folder i have this folder out on my new uh, thunderbolt g-ray drive that i called final cut pro archives and you'll see that there are a whole bunch of little sparse disk images out here and that's where I'm keeping everything. Now the first real part of this process is to use disk utility and here's the window for disk utility and we're going to run through the process creating a sparse image. So I'm going to create one. Um, the project I just did outside is on uh, neutral density filters so I'm going to call this ND uh, fill, oops, uh, filters. And I, I just started putting this name in there. You don't have to do this already. Oh, obviously, A R C H I V E. I can't talk and type at the same time. Now I always copy that name, 
I'm going to do copy, and I come down here to the name, uh, and I paste it in because not only am I naming the archive, but I'm naming the disk that's going to mount in Final Cut 10. Uh, and then you go down to the size, and you're going to pick custom. Now let's say, again, I tend to make my projects fairly small, so you're going to have to kind of learn how this works. And there's an article, by the way, where you can learn a lot more about this. And you can get to that at planet5d.com slash sparse disk, S-P-A-R-S-E-D-I-S-K. Uh, so I usually pick uh, custom size, and it's this rather funny the way this works. So I type in 20,000 because I'm going to make a sparse disk of 20 gigabytes. And I hit the tab key and I type a G to make it scroll down to that and it takes that 20,000 and converts it into 20 gigabytes. Uh, I tend to do a lot of things without my mouse. Um, so then I'm going to say OK. So it's going to pick that as a custom size you see right there. And now under image format I'm going to create it as a sparse, sparse disk image. Easy for me to say. Um, and I leave everything else the same. It's going to be Mac OS Extended Journal, in, no encryption, single partition, and I'm going to do Create. And it's going to put it in my folder. And after it does that, so I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. You will see right up here, here's the ND filters, FCPX archive, that's sparse image, and it created it as 121 megabytes. Now sparse disk image is going to grow in size as we add things to it. And you will see that there is also a new disk here in my list of devices called ND Filters SFP, I can't see it, Archive. And so the other thing that I do is I have, I'm going to go back a folder because I have this folder called Chris's Folder Structure. And I've taken tips from that post that he made and so I've just made a folder structure and these are all um, empty things they're all empty folders at this point and I'm going to take it and I'm going to drag it down to here and I'm going to drop it so that my brand new disk called ND filters FP, FCPX archive has that folder structure in it Okay, so Final Cut Pro is open, and you can see here I have my new little archive for, and there aren't any events in there yet, and here is my disk for the projects, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to import my data, uh, so I'm going to do Option N to create a new event, and I'm going to Again, I'm going to paste in the same name that I had before because I like everything with the same name for some reason. And then I'm going to do Import Media. So I'm navigating over to the SD card that I have inserted and I am going to select the movies that I want to import into my special little project. And they're all it should be just dated today. So those are the three that I want dated today. And I'm going to click Import Selected. And yes, I want them added. I'm just going to say go ahead and analyze for audio just for fun. Um, I don't need to create proxy media on this. So I'm going to do Import. So my data has been imported. I can start working on the project and these things are showing up as missing because I actually had a problem on the import. The disk somehow didn't read properly. But that's not important right now to this little tutorial. So that's But that's why these things are there. And I'll fix that in a minute. Um, so the process here is to quit Final Cut Pro because I need it to release this disk. So I quit Final Cut Pro. And now once Final Cut Pro has quit, um, I need to eject this disk because I want it to write all of the data from the uh, it to the sparse image. So I'm going to eject that and go back to my folder. Go back to my folder with all of my little projects, and here is the 
ND Filters Final Cut Pro 10 Archive Sparse Image, and you see that it now has 4.5 gigabytes of stuff. So when I'm ready to start working on this, I just simply double click the sparse image to open it. And now you see that that disk is open. And when I open Final Cut 10, there's my events. You can see there's my little event right there. And I didn't create a project, so that's not listed. And I'm off and running. And when I'm done with the project, all I have to do is take that sparse disk image and this one right there and I can move it wherever I want to put it, and it's archived. So that entire project is self-contained, ready to go, and I could even pass that off to my spouse who does some of my editing for me now. So that's probably what I'm going to do with this project. Anyway, so you move that thing wherever you want, share it with people, do whatever editing, and that's it for today's Daily Planet 5D episode.